Hi everyone and welcome to a new Twinmotion tutorial. In this video we will explore the new configuration tool, a fast and interactive way to switch between materials or objects, opening car doors with triggers, or even cycling between different weather ambiance. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Alright, let's start by importing the data. So I'm going to go to my import doc right here and import my first data set. Now I'm going to locate my files right here and new in 2025 is the new dot wire import. So in here in the formats, I'm going to make sure that I choose dot wire. This is available if you have alias surface installed on your local machine. I'm going to start importing the first set right here. And once I do that, I'm greeted with the import dialog. Now here I can choose the different tessellation presets. So with a low coarse tessellation here, it will make the import faster, but I'll have less accurate representation and fewer polygons. I can slowly increase the quality here and that is going to make the short tolerance as well as some other settings like the normal tolerance, which will give me better accuracy on the surface. Now you also have the option to enable the substitution with a CSV file. So if you want to batch rename some surfaces or names or objects or assign materials, you can link a CSV file right here. So let's import the data. And once the processing done, we should be able to see here our wire file correctly imported. So we can spin around and check the surface and just making sure that everything looks correct. Now I'm going to open my second data set here. I'm going to make sure that the wire is selected with the high quality preset again. I'm going to go ahead and import that data. Okay, once our data imported, we can check for any surface errors. Everything seems good, but I do notice one little error here on the mirror. Seems like the normals are flipped. No problem, we can actually fix that in Twinmotion in the modeling tools. So let's go down into the modeling tab and I'm going to be selecting the group that contains the mirror of the car here. So let me select this in the outliner. Now with that group selected, I can go into the modeling tools and I'm going to go to faces and edit normals. Now what we see in red are the normals that need to be flipped. I have the options here to select single faces. So if I click in single, I can select and deselect the faces needed. Now in my case, I can use the auto fix. Now that will calculate the objects that need flipping automatically, which does a very good job. But in this case, it's also created another flipped normal. So instead of using the auto fix on that part, I'm just going to select the connected group, click on that highlighted error, and that's going to flip it for me. Now, once done with the fixes, we can simply deselect the object here, I'm going to click in the scene. And now we have a complete mirror set with correct normals, all done within Twinmotion 2025. Now let's import the seed data wire file so I can show you also some other features that could be useful for automotive. So let's import the wire seed file and do the same process as our previous wire files. Now I'm just going to hide the car here so we can focus on our seats and show you some of the features here of 2025 that can be really useful. So first of all, I have the material IDs correctly imported from alias. That is awesome. Now let's try applying some materials to the centerpiece here. I'm simply going to drag and drop this onto the seat and we immediately notice here that we have lots of stretching and different UV islands. Now this is very typical if you import CAD data. We can see all the different seams here because there's no UV textures applied. Now to better visualize this, let's throw on the UV checker material and see exactly what is happening. Now when we zoom out and let's scale the UVs a little bit, we can see that all of the different UV islands are going different directions here. Now, we definitely don't want that. So let's apply the padded leather back to the seats. And now if I look carefully in the material settings, 
we have the option to have a tri-planner mapping. Now I'm going to select world space here in the tri-planner settings and now we see correctly our UVs displaying correctly. I can scale it up and I don't see any seams going on. Now let's see about the side cushions here. Let's maybe go into the library and select a leather material. I'm going to select the full grain right here. And again, here, same problem as the center of the seat. We have some scenes. I can go into the material properties in Tri Planner and set that to world space. This allows you in most cases to visualize your product in a much nicer way without having to deal with the UV mapping. Now let's go back to our data set and see how we could mirror the car. In 2025, we have the option to mirror this data set. So what we're going to do here is we're going to explore that new modeling feature. So I'm going to select that specific set here and I can see that my axis is right in the middle. That is perfect. Now I can head down to the modeling tools right down here. And what I want to be doing here is mirror that particular data set. So I'm going to choose the object here and choose mirroring. Right now it's selected to none. So in the options, I'm going to tell it to mirror to the right. And we can see that our data set now is perfectly mirrored along that axis. Very useful to have this feature inside of Twin Motion now. Once you're satisfied with the mirroring, you can simply deselect your object here in the outliner and that will apply the merge and mirroring to the car. Now we can check our model and see if there's any glitches or any unattached vertices, but the mirroring tool here has done a really good job. Now I'm just going to quickly do some quick look dev here and apply some different car materials. And once that done, we'll move to the configuration side of things. All right, so here we are in my final studio set with all the look dev and all of the data imported. Now let's check out together the new configurator variant manager tool here in 2025.1. So what I want to do is go down into the media doc and with the last tab selected here, the configuration tab, I can select different possibilities and capture properties. Now we are going to start with a simple material switch. We're going to be switching car paint materials. Now I'm going to create my first state. Now this is whatever I see on my screen, that is going to be my first state. So I see a black car paint. So I'm going to rename this black and to capture a second state, Let's maybe change the color to red, for example. So I'm going to drag and drop that on the car body. And in order to capture that property, we are going to click on that plus create state. That is going to create my second state now with the red color because we are capturing the material property. Now let's redo the same technique with a blue color. Let's assign that to the car body create a new state that is going to be by blue color and let's do maybe another one which is going to be the silver one so i'm just going to drag and drop that onto the car body and again i want to tell it to capture that new value now with all of these done we have four different states now i can change the color in the media doc but you may have noticed also that I have a UI that appeared in the viewport. So let's switch over to full screen mode and try this button out. So as you notice, if I click on this button, it's going to cycle through the different states that we've captured. Now let's say we want to customize this a little bit more. Well, with the state selected, if you go onto the right, we can check that we have new properties right here. So in the trigger settings, I can change the behavior of this. Instead of being a toggle, I can make that as a list. I also have some icons that are proposed already in the library. So let's change this maybe to the paint icon. And in the details, I can also customize this a little bit further and maybe let's put the icon just a little bit bigger here for us. 
Now let's try this again in full screen. Let's press our icon. And now instead of a toggle, we actually have a list. Now I can cycle again between my states, but you might notice that I don't have any visuals nor thumbnails. So let's customize this a little further for better clarity. In my state here, I can have the choice between loading a custom thumbnail or capture directly in the viewport. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to capture that in the viewport and I'm going to move my camera to a better angle. So I'm just going to move the camera here, maybe to the door panel. And with the three buttons selected, I can capture the thumbnail directly in the viewport. So I'm going to switch between different states and capture each color. Now, once we're done with the capturing, let's zoom out and test this new thumbnail capture. And now we have much better visuals on what we're doing when we're switching states. Okay, now that we have successfully done our first configuration and our car paint switch material, let's maybe go ahead and change the wheels here. So I'm going to create a new configuration. So I'm going to go back to my tab. I'm going to rename our first one, car paint, just to keep things tidy here. And then I'm going to create a new configuration. Now I want to select the three dots here and instead of a material switch, what we're going to be doing is we're going to capture the visibility. Now I'm going to go and check the visibility right here and I'm going to create my first state. Now just like the car paint, whatever I have here on the screen is going to be my first state. So this is going to be wheel 01. So let's select our wheel and let's head over to the outliner. Now with the first set selected, I'm going to uncheck that and then I'm going to check the second one, make that visible. And with that visible, I'm going to create that new state and that is going to capture my second visible wheel. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the third wheel and finally the fourth and last wheel. All right, now that we've done this, let's try this in the dock. Let's click on the wheel 01 and see if this works. It's correctly switching between the different wheel sets. Now we can even see what's happening here in the outliner. When I switch different states, we can see in the outliner exactly what is happening between the unhide and hide visibility that we're just capturing here. Now, just like the material switch, I'm going to capture the thumbnails for my wheel. So I'm just going to place correctly the camera, do this for all four wheels. And once I'm done, I'm going to back out, zoom out just a little bit and try our UI. So when I press on the button, it's going to cycle between all the wheels. Now I'm going to change the behavior to list and maybe I can change the icon to a custom icon. So I'm going to click the plus button here and browse to my icons here. I'm going to load this one for the wheels and that is going to correctly load that UI for me. Now in the viewport, we only just see our current configuration. If you want to see the full configuration, you have to go in full screen. Once I go into full screen mode, I can see our new configuration with the wheels, but also the previous one that we set with the colors. Now let's explore together the properties configuration. In this case, I can use it to maybe open the car door. So let's select the gizmo and let's press play here. I have my correct animation. Now I can capture that in the configuration. So let's close the library here, make some space and let's go to the side profile here. And let's go here and make sure that we have the properties enabled here. I'm going to go ahead and create plus. This is going to be my default state. So whatever I have in the screen here, it is my default. So door is closed. Now our first state is done. Let's capture that play property. So I'm going to select my door trigger here and I'm going to press on the play button. Now, in order to record that property, I'm going to press on the plus state, telling it that I'm recording that new property change. So let's test this and let's click on door closed and door open. We can see that it's correctly capturing that new property for us. 
So like the previous configurations, I have a UI here, but maybe let's switch this into 3D space. So let's go into the trigger settings and instead of 2D layer, I'm going to put this as 3D assets. And now my trigger is in 3D space. I can move that trigger maybe closer to the handle of the door and I can use that trigger to play my animation. Now that trigger is always going to be facing camera, but I don't always want it on. So let's check in the properties of that trigger and see if we can do something. So let's scroll down here and let's go to details. I can do a fade trigger, which means that it's only going to show up when the mouse is close to that door handle. Let's do an example here. My mouse cursor is quite far. As soon as I go to that door handle, now the trigger shows. Now I can click on it and I can move the cursor away so it does not disrupt the visuals of the car. I can correctly see the interior and when I'm done, I can simply click on that trigger again and move the cursor away so I don't have any visuals disrupting the car here. Now let's switch over to our CG environment here to show you the last configuration, which is the ambiance. Now I'll make sure to select the ambiance property and that will allow me to record all the different properties of the weather effects. So I'm going to go and create plus here and I'll create my initial morning lighting here. So I have mine here. I'm just going to rename this maybe to morning to make things easier. And I'm going to create a second one, which is maybe going to be towards the midday. I'm going to play a little bit with the north offsets here and all of these properties are going to be recorded into the ambiance sets. Now once satisfied with the lighting, I can record that property and then let's do maybe a final one here with a more sunset and let's change a bit the cloud settings. So with these beautiful volumetric clouds, we can also capture these properties within the ambiance tab and Let's go something slightly overcast here, just to showcase the different effects with the new 2025 version. Now, I got that captured really beautifully here. I'm very satisfied with it. I'm going to create this state, which is going to be sunset. Now let's maybe change the icon here and put something a bit more Relevance. Let's change this to the sky icon here and let's make this a little bit bigger so it corresponds with the rest of the UI. Now when I click on that button, it's going to switch and cycle between the different ambiance modes that we have set up. Now to finalize things, once you want to render an image, you can actually use your configuration sets. So let's go into the image tab and let's open up the properties. On the very far right tab, you have the image properties and now you have access to the configuration. This allows you to have all the setup and render each different colors or different wheels or even different animations that we have set up all in one place, making it extremely convenient for you to render multiple images with different variant sets. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and looking forward to all of the new configurations you will come up with. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.